Good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture. In the series on kinship, sociology of kinship, in today's lecture we are going to discuss on the ways in which marriage as an institution has been conceptualized and the focus is to understand the changes or how it has kind of undergone change both in academic discourse and also how people perceive it in their lived uh, in terms of understanding whether marriage has kind of changed due to modernity, globalization. So, before we uh, kind of start on understanding marriage in South Asia, we need to keep in mind that marriage as an institution is not static. It has undergone large scale change both in the way in which it has been conceptualized in sociology and anthropology and also because of the influence of social media, technology and economic process. So, if we go to the traditional method of understanding marriage, it was kind of restricted to the understanding of uh, practices found more or less among the upper caste uh, 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 in terms of certain rules and if there was a kind of divergence from the rules then it was kind of considered as deviant and nothing beyond it. So, therefore, there was a need to kind of relocate it because say by the 90s, 50s, 60s, both in the western countries and in Asian country there was a belief that almost everything about marriage has been conceptualized. If marriage was a rule of selection of spouse, of if marriage was a caste uh, rule, then uh, anthropologists had already studied it. So, there was a kind of decline in the interest. However, 1980s, 90s, we see a new, new interest not only in terms of re-examining the institution of marriage, but also bringing about a change in the methodology itself. So, rather than considering marriage as kind of universal, kinship as universal and a western upper caste, upper class phenomena, the focus is now to understand those which has not been documented, practices which has been considered as uh, missing in the anthropological text. So, there will be a lot of discussion on say lower caste institutions of kinship and family on non-Hindus and also in terms of understanding the cultural variation and diversity in which the institution kind of so, is the lot of change, but yet there is continuity. In today's lecture, we are going to refer to the work of Rajni Palriwal and works marrying in South Asia and the concepts and continuity shifts and continuities in understanding marriage as an institution. So, to begin, we know that marriage has always been a central. Uh, idea or a central concept in the study of kinship and family and also in terms of imagination of culture, identity and citizenship. So, there is a kind of an interdisciplinary approach where we kind of not only consider it in as belonging to the realm of culture or as something belonging to the realm of domestic, but we connect it to the idea of citizenship which is political and also to the idea of the commercialization of the the entire institution in terms of the wedding expenses, in terms of marriage prestations, dowry, bride price. So, it is kind of uh, not only to be understood in terms of spouse selection or in terms of uh, creating an alliance between two groups, but also to understand the larger context of economic and political changes taking place. Uh, have been way in which it has kind of re-examined is one is to look into the feminist critique and the feminist critique kind of looks into the gendered nature of marriage. So, the conjugal contract is the second idea where there is lot of influence from the western romantic Victorian idea of looking into marriage as contract and South Asia kind of considered to be more religiously uh, ordained the idea is that to look into marriage as sacrament. So, we have uh, scholars like Patricia Obroy who is trying to consider whether it is a sacrament or a contract. And the third area of the uh, contribution in the uh, 
discourse has been the understanding of economics of marriage in terms of looking into the heavy wedding ceremonies and in terms of how we look into the expenses which is incurred on wedding as an indication of your class uh, status. So, the more you spend or the more heavy uh, uh, wed wedding ceremonies are, you are going to uh, display to the world your wealth and therefore, we have got new economy of marriage by looking into the ideas of destination wed wedding or the idea of so much of uh, pre-marriage, uh, marital, post-marital photography. So, it is kind of also connected to the class uh, of the uh, society whereby marriage in itself displays the wealth. So, Marrying in South Asia is a text written um, uh, in uh, by Rajni Pal Rivar and Ravindra Kaur and it provides a multifaceted understanding of the institution of marriage. Why multifaceted? Because we are going to go, go away from the conventional or the traditional understanding of marriage, which was kind of considered uh, more in terms of looking into the way in which alliance was established, the ways in which structures of the society was uh, constructed through the exchange of women. Now, it is kind of uh, going into the critique of it, it is going into going into a larger uh, domain of uh, moving away from the demographic understanding of fertility and empowerment to larger debates on body, sexuality and agency of women. So, Rajni Palriwala and Ravindra Kaur's work, Marrying in South Asia, Sifting Concepts, Changing Practices in a Globalizing World. So, this is the te text which we are referring to in terms of uh, arriving at a more holistic, at a more interdisciplinary understanding of the institution of uh, marriage. And in this work, the authors, it is an edited volume which has a contribution from a number of uh, scholars and the different essays in this volume examines the complexities of change and cons continuity in the marriage. So, we know that there is lot of change which is kind of visible, but when in kind, kind of go into the lived experiences of or we go into the perception of people, we see that the caste uh, or the rules of caste, uh, the selection of sp a spouse, kind of no, uh, honor killing, violence are some of the thread which will continue despite the showcase of uh, wedding and uh, the way in which it is kind of uh, uh, shown in terms of kind of something which is uh, increasing uh, over the years. So, despite the new public imagination of marriage and what is this new imagination of marriage is the way in which it is kind of shown as conjugal love in terms of kind of uh, uh, display of wealth. The second is the, the, the contrast between the love or self choice marriage versus arranged marriage. So, in the conventional anthropological literature, you know that there was a kind of comparison of society based on the selection of spouse and it was kind of articulated that the uh, say the more of Asian countries there was kind of an arranged marriage. Why? Because marriage was establishing a bond between two families or two uh, kind of clan. Whereas, western society where there was individualism, the uh, possibility of choice was there because marriage was not in terms of establishing relationship or structuring relationship, but it was a question of uh, uh, choice, freedom and individual own uh, needs. The third area is been kind of looking into the increased rate of divorce. So, on one side we have the public uh, social media uh, imaginations of heavy weddings where people are seen in terms of kind of spending and enjoying. On the other side there is an increase in the rate of divorce and there is also in kind of uh, questioning whether it is the monogamous uh, long life relationship which uh, is established. So, we see both the side as, uh, in terms of the cultural changes as well as economic process of globalization which has also affected spouse selections. So, marriage prestations ha has kind of taken on a new meaning for both men and women and also uh, connected the idea of articulations of desire, of individualism, of freedom and choice. 
So, with the globalizing world as the backdrop, the essays in the book traces the encounter with changing notions and practice of marriage. The integration of the larger economic and political context in understanding of personal relation around marriage is significant. So, again going back to the call of personal is political from the women's movement or even within the academic discourse that the, the we cannot kind of understand gender, kinship, family by following the dichotomy of the domestic and the uh, public or the reproductive and the pro productive and a large number of feminist uh, work has kind of hinted to the idea there is always a continuum between the two and there is a interconnected. So, as much as kind of marriage influences the domestic relationship, kin relationship, it is equally influenced by the economic political conditions of the society. And that is re the reason why the focus is to understand cultural variation rather than considering uh, kinship or family as kind of universal uh, only based on norms and rules. So, if, if we continue to do that, then there is nothing left to study. With the help of diverse ethnographic account, demographic analysis and economic investigation, the authors of this uh, edited volume provide a wide window to marriage than the conventional understanding. And as I already said, there are certain areas where we kind of start re-examining the conventional understanding in terms of the comparison of society between traditional forms of marriage, uh, selection, spouse selection, the understanding of conjugal love, the idea of family towards the modern. So, is it kind of a shift from the traditional to the modern or there is lot of continuity from the tradition to modern and yet they are kind of certain shifts taking place. And the most important anthropological uh, relevant uh, in terms of looking into the understanding of the institution of marriage is to kind of move from the discourses of uh, structural functionalist to structuralism to cultural approach where the importance is to understand the meaning which is attached you know. So, it could be the same cultural setting with the meaning attached by individual uh, in terms of the bond or in terms of love and conjugality it ca uh, can be multiple. So, when we look into the way in which the institution of marriage has been studied in anthropology, the authors are of opinion that there is a paucity of literature on the study of marriage and that too in the recent years because much of the theorization in anthropology begins with the idea of uh, uh, spouse selection. So, if you go back to the alliance approach by Levi Strauss and Louis Dumont, we look into how the incest and endogamy as rules were kind of uh, helping us to understand the settlements which was happening at the clan or the group level. So, beyond that there is not much uh, literature which would talk about uh, in terms of the individual uh, choice in terms of agency, in terms of going beyond the conventional upper caste uh, our endogamy caste rule. So, this there was a kind of a restricted way in which the uh, literature on uh, marriage was uh, conceptualized. Earlier anthropological and sociological work on kinship, marriage and family were taken to be the principle of social organization along with caste, religion, village. So, when we uh, kind of try to understand uh, uh, marriage, it kind of does not exist irrespective uh, without the family and ma ma uh, kind of kinship. So, we have uh, books which are titled as family, kinship and marriage. So, it is kind of considered to be a joining thread in the literature on family and kinship. So, it was placed in the evolutionary framework. So, you as society was evolving, so, so we have lot of literature which would say that there was a shift from polygamous, polyandrous marriage to monogamous. There was a kind of uh, uh, analysis which could compare the tribal society to the mainstream society saying that in tribal society there was lot of uh, promiscuity whereas as we kind of become more uh, complex, we kind of start entering into a monogamous heterosexual uh, norm becomes uh, significant. So, it is within this framework which uh, marriage as an institution was being analyzed. So, if you look into the way in which uh, marriage has been conceptualized in uh, anthropology, we see it begins with the structural functional analysis uh, in which uh, we have contribution by Srinivas and Iravati Karve and we move to structural analysis which is Louis Dumont 
and T N Madan. And then we kind of after 1960s, 70s, we have Schneider uh, into David Schneider, who kind of starts uh, bringing in his cultural approach with his work, what is, uh, what about kinship. And therefore, we have this cultural, uh, a number of uh, scholars like Frusetti, Inden and Nicholas. And post-cultural approach, we kind of starting having new analytical insight, which kind of uh, in with reference to Oberoi, uh, Patricia Oberoi, who starts questioning the way in which we understand joint family, the way in which we understand marriage, uh, whether it is a sacrament or a contract. So, we see a whole kind of uh, evolution within the discourse on uh, marriage uh, as an institution. But most significant or the most uh, uh, relevant point from where our understanding kind of starts undergoing a change is David Schneider's critique uh, of the biological premise. So, we had the biological model in uh, anthropology where the focus was in terms of contrasting the uh, two kind of families on the basis of the blood sharing. So, the biological premise was in terms of uh, comparing the patrilineal uh, family with matrilineal. So, early 1930s, 40s old kinship literature was talking about uh, how marriage within a patrilineal society would be kind of based on endogamous rule or it could be kind of marrying outside your village. And this was contrasted to the matrilineal society in the say in South India where the significance was in marrying within the familial relations like uh, marrying your uncle or marrying your elder brother's uh, daughter. So, these was one of the premise on which biological model was kind of wished and Schneider was cr uh, kind of critiquing it in the sense that it was kind of leaving around a large number of relationship it could not be captured by the biological uh, sharing of blood. And then we, it was also kind of a uh, lot of criticism in terms of the anthropological own conception of their western society and there was a kind of an element of ethnocentrism and implicit orientalism in kinship studies. And Schneider concluded that there is no transcultural category called kinship, he rather called kinship as abstract. So, in the series on sociology of kinship, there has been a lecture on a, a cultural approach by David Schneider. So, if it would help in terms of understanding how the shifts has taken place in anthropology. So, after David Schneider, we see that it kind of comes to almost a standstill in the US because the whole idea is that if uh, uh, the rules, the norms have been already been understood, what else to study in, uh, uh, in the family. So, later on we see new threads of scholarship emerging post 1980s, uh, the kinship uh, sister uh, studies which is kind of also referred as this new kinship studies brings out new ways of uh, understanding familial relationship and this are kind of uh, not limited. So, the first important uh, thread in the scholarship in the post 1980s after David Schneider is that they were not limited to the study of tribes and remote communities or non Hindus. Again, this was uh, understanding of kinship as something with to be found in the underdeveloped or in among the tribal community was to compare the uh, non-Western society with this and therefore, the comparison uh, was that the western were industrialized class becomes an important category whereas underdeveloped or the tribal communities remote communities were underdeveloped in which kinship or personal relations still dominated but this was guy starts becoming critic uh, being critiqued by a number of scholars and in kind of class as a uh, uh, criteria is equally relevant in terms of understanding the structures of kinship and marriage in industrial society. So, the study of marriage had not disappeared, it is not kind of that people became disinterested in it, but it kind of uh, start having a new approach or a new methodology and the shift was that the study of kinship and practices uh, was not restricted to norms and rules ideology, How, rather it involved intensive field work for which funding has not been easily available inside or outside of economic uh, academia. So, there is a limit uh, kind of a obstacle which most of anthropologists uh, face because of the disinterest in the study of marriage, it no longer attracts kind of funding or it no longer 
becomes a attractive area of study. However, as economic growth and population control becomes central ideology in development and state policy, demographic change and reproductive behavior becomes privileged so, uh, area of research. So, uh, and indirectly kinship and marriage will become important because if the uh, demographer or kind of wants to study the strategies to curb the rise in population, you have to understand the institution of marriage and how the relationship in the within the family is structured in order to make the choice of fertility. The social demographer explored the correlation between marital sexual behavior, reproductive strategy, contraceptions, age at marriage and fertility level within the family patterns, mobility, education, urbanization and female empowerment. So, these were the areas that were taken up by, for research by the social demographer. Family was assumed as a site of care and welfare. So, if you look into the government policies or the demographer, the family was kind of uh, taking from the functional school in sociology was seen as an area uh, where uh, you would get care, welfare, there would be economic uh, dependency. And the debate about uh, or the second debate was in terms of understanding the decline of extended family. So, much of the um, uh, understanding on marriage entered indirectly through the discussion on the decline of uh, uh, joint family or extended family and also in terms of understanding family as an institution for care and welfare. The another steady thread of scholarship uh, globally has been through the new focus on women's voice. So, uh, though there is kind of no direct scholarship on marriage, but uh, the, it will be again an indirect reference to it because of the increase on literature and discourses on gender, women's voice uh, and the most significant contribution that kind of is a marker of the starting of gender studies in kinship is Yanasiko and Collier first published in 1987, where they called for a unified analysis of gender and kinship. So, uh, prior to the, uh, if you look into the biological or the cultural approach the alliance approach, they were kind of uh, ignorant of the uh, uh, gender uh, dimension of kinship and they were more or less talking about from a male ego perspective. So, it is only in the 1980s with a unified system of analysis of gender and kinship that women's agency, women's voice becomes the center of focus. These studies looked at the ideology, dynamics and practice of marriage rather than simply at structures and form. So, what becomes significant is in terms of everyday lived experience rather than looking at grand structures. Uh, why? Because you know the structures norms are at an abstract level, the lived experience is more at a micro level. So, what these and other studies examine was how the historical entrenchment of capitalism had favored patrilocal system and male inheritance and thereby affected gender equation in marriage and the domestic sphere. So, sociologically when we look into the study is also in terms of looking into the debate between the arranged uh, or the marriage by individual choice and that again is kind of uh, looking at marriage as a structure and pattern set of relationship and practices. So, it is embedded in norms and values regarding what marriage should be and what it is. Here explicit social prescriptions and sanctions by public bodies, the state becomes a regulator of the personal relation and at, along with state it is also the religion and community which will regulate uh, the selection of spouse. So, at the minimum a marriage makes kind of a legal and public even if not always socially accepted an intimate relationship between two individuals. It thereby imbricates the public in the personal and makes public order vulnerable to the vagaries of what we viewed as purely individual intimacy. So, the debate is whether marriage is only an individual intimacy or it becomes a question of uh, public uh, uh, relation because the state, the religion, community are going to intervene in terms of the selection of spouse. So, they will be also look into the idea of violence and honor killing which comes in in terms of uh, not going by the norms, not following your caste rules. So, the, the uh, understanding that marriage is uh, exclusively a personal relation or a question of individual, individual gets more complicated as we kind of uh, move towards
was the debates on globalization and the formation of nation state. So, in much of South Asia, a marriage is kind of an ongoing relationship between two individuals. It establishes between two groups such as family, household, lineage or clan and it is kind of considered as a structural alliance also in terms of uh, establishing political relationship and uh, all this idea of the uh, self choice, love marriage depending on what kind of ideas of new ways has been much contributed through the uh, social media and the progress in uh, you know. So, the uh, technology where you the selections of spouses was done through sharing of information among familiar relationship, now websites, uh, marriage websites and also a lot of platform for interacting or, uh, with your community uh, people has kind of ended. So, the changes in marriage is complex. However, we will see that there is a continuity of some of the rules which is in terms of the significance of religion, community and state in regulating marriage and also in terms of the understanding that it is more a cultural phenomena than it kind of be a, a question of individual intimacy. With this, I come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.